Hello everyone, this is the basic course of Fixed Maintenance College. I hope you can get more new and important knowledge from each lesson of this basic course. Okay, now I'll teach you some basic motherboard repair materials and what they can do. This is tweezers. As you can see that one tweezers is straight, another one is curved. These two are entry level tweezers. The material is hard, not easy to damage, mostly used for motherboard chip disassembly. This is the second tweezers. The material of this tweezer is ceramic, so it is anti-magnetic. The tip of the tweezers is hard, sharp and thick enough, so it can be used for disassembly and assembly of motherboard chips and jumper. This is the third type of tweezers. This is high level repair tweezers. It is more precise, sharper, easier to disassemble and assemble chips and jumper, but it is easy to break. Next, I will introduce you the blade. Here are two blade sets. Part of the chip is need to be pried off with a blade, and the chip path processing, edge glue, and other places need to use a blade. You will see which blade is used for which step in later lesson. The one on the left is SS101C, which is an advanced switch for mobile phone repair, scrapper, sickle, blade. On the right is the medium level repair blade, RL101B. This set had eight blades, and they all are commonly used. This is clean room, which is a dust free cloak. And this thing we need to use in every repair cleaning work. Because the motherboard repair is sophisticated, if there are small dirt or foreign objects under the chip, it will affect the connection between the chip and motherboard, resulting in abnormal function controlled by the chip. And this material is better than the tissue. Okay, this is next one. This is fluke paste, which is used to soldering. This is one of the most important materials for motherboard repair because it can help with soldering. The conditions for choosing such products are that the flux should be clear, good weldability, less smoke and not heavy smell. So we recommend using this model. You can also use it with a syringe to make the place where flux is added more accurate. And this is PCB holder, which is used to clamp the motherboard so that it will not move during maintenance. This one support iPhone 5X to iPhone XR. You can find other PCB holder with higher versions online. This is PCB water, which is used to clean the PCB board. When we handle the motherboard, the motherboard may have flux and glue or other foreign matter. We need to use PCB water to clean the motherboard. When the phone gets water damaged, we also need to use it for cleaning. The next one is the revolve stencil which is used to revolve. Because when we remove the chip, the thin ball of the chip have been deformed or shift. So we need to let the thin point of the chip back to thin ball. And this is 2D stencil and in the market also have 3D stencil. You can check online to see if it is suitable for you. The materials used in our courses are cost effective. You can find other brands and models online. And the Revolve BJ Stencil has many categories for different mobile phones models. You need to pay attention when buying. And this is soldering wick, which is used to clean the tin. It can absorb tin, then it will become silvery white. We need to cut off the discolored ones before continuing to use. When we remove the chips, the pad also have tin point and glue. We need to clean them and let it be flat. Otherwise, in the pad, some place upper, some place lower. And the thin point of the chips cannot connect all pins of pad well. And that chip function will not work. Okay, this is thin paste which is used to micro soldering. This melting point of this thin paste is about 180 degrees. In the market also have the 138 degrees thin paste. And the original thin in the motherboard, the melting point is more higher. So when we handle the board, we need to add those lower melting point tin paste so that it can more easy to clean the original tin. And we also use it for reboard the chip. Tin wire and tin paste, the difference is status. One is solid and the other is liquid. They act in different places. 
you will see it in the following lessons. And this thin wire melting point also is 180 degrees. And there are kinds of jumper wire. Their thickness is different, and some are insulated and some are non-insulated. Insulated wires are used from jumper between two pins, and non-insulated wires generally used for jumpers at solar points which is missing. This is rosin. It is like solid fluke paste, but it is solid and it will be smoked after heating and has good viscosity. This is also suitable for welding. These are coating pliers. It is mostly used to cut off the shell and soldering wick. This is also a common basic tool. And this is UV light which is used to let the UV paste faster curing. Next, we will see UV paste. As you can see, it has many colors, but generally we just use green. So some people will call it green oil. The UV paste is used to insulate part of the circuit or solder joint. Because two lines contact will cause a short circuit, so we need to use the UV paste to insulate it. Hi everyone, welcome to join our first lesson. In the first class of this course, we will first explain the iPhone's external structure, internal structure and motherboard structure. First, let's take a look at the external structure of the iPhone. Here is the front of the iPhone, it contains earpiece or front microphone, ambient light or proximity sensor, FaceTime camera, ring or mute switch, volume addition and subtraction, application icon, Retina HD display with 3D touch technology. Headphone jack. Main microphone. Status bar. Sleep or wake button. SIM card holder. Home button and touch ID sensor. Speaker. Secondary microphone, lighting interface, and other parts. Then we look at the back of the iPhone, which contains True Tone Flash, Back Camera, Back Microphone. The bow is the external organization of the iPhone. Let's take a look at the internal structure of the iPhone. First, this is the earpiece, LCD display. Fingerprint model, back button. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS antenna. Back camera. Leon lithium battery. Motherboard. Taptic engine vibrator. Speaker. Tape lock FPC connector cable. Back shell. Power button, volume button, flash, rear microphone, integrated cable. SIM card holder. These are relatively large parts. Next, let's explain the internal structure of the iPhone and the distribution components of the motherboard. You can see that this is a complete phone. When we separate the screen, it looks like this. Obviously, this is a place to install the motherboard. And there are many screw holes inside. Please note that you must put the screw in the upper groove because different screws are installed in different positions. If it is installed incorrectly, it will easily cause this screw to affect the normal operation of the motherboard because it will damage the motherboard. You can see that these are two motherboards, they are the same. It is obvious that the motherboard on the right has two more things than the motherboard on the left. These two are the shielding cover. For novice, we recommend using coating pliers to cut the shielding cover part. Because the novice may not have a good grasp of the temperature of the hot air gun. When we open the two shielding covers, we can see that there are a lot of chips inside.
Next, we will tell you in detail which chip is in which position under the microscope. And these chips are damaged or work improperly will cause what failures. Ok, to see screen. This is the front of the motherboard. You can see that there are many connectors on it. Each connector is connected to a different cable. First of all, the first connector is on the iPhone motherboard, which is J2321, the model of iPhone 6. And all about the chip and lines information you can check it in software CXW. This is the rear camera interface connector. If it is damaged, it will cause malfunctions such as failure to take pictures. Ok, let's look at the next connector. This connector is a J2401 touchscreen connector. If it is damaged, it will cause touch bar or all the touch to fail.